All right, class. As of right now, we are officially finishing Word, or finished with Word, rather, uh, and we are moving on to Excel. So I'm going to give you a little quick tour of Excel. You'll see the little green X at the bottom of the screen. Uh, for some odd reason, I think I've had a few people who are trying to use the online version. Uh, remember, for any assignments we're doing in class, you actually cannot use the online version. It doesn't have half the features that are required to do any of the assignments. So, <clears throat> I'm going to continue. Uh, go ahead and go into this. Uh, normally when you open it up, you may go to a screen that looks like this. This is basically a little template page. Uh, you can pick a template and basically just fill it out. Anything from class schedules to uh, projects and whatever you can imagine. Uh, you can even download more stuff if you want, or even Google stuff and they can download the templates for you. Typically we are either going to open a file or we're going to use this blank workbook. And here I am. Now, I'm going to go through this and you'll see roughly everything you'll need to know, uh, everything we're going to be using in the chapter. <clears throat> Alright, so each one of these little squares here is called a cell. Uh, and they're you see these little lines? These are the grid lines that kind of separate them. They let you know where one cell is and another cell is. Uh, if I click right here, you'll see this is actually A1. A is my column letter, and 1 is my row number. Uh, so we have column letters, row numbers. If I click here, that's B12. And you see they kind of highlight, it even tells you in the upper corner here. Now, the purpose of Excel. Word is relatively easy. Excel is actually one of the hardest things we tend to do uh, in class, uh, this particular class. And it's because there's just so much that you can do in Excel. You can literally go to a bookstore, and you'll probably find, at minimum, probably five or six books on Excel. Hundreds, maybe even a thousand pages big, uh, because there's just so much here. <laughs> the book we're using for this class uh, has about three chapters or so, give or take, uh, and the actual stuff that actually comes from a larger book. The larger book has something like ten or so chapters. So we're actually only just scratching the surface of what Excel can do with this class. Uh, but we'll do enough to where basically it's going to be a little bit useful. Now, I'll go through the menu, go through how everything works, and uh, then we'll stop there. Alright, so this is our first cell, and most of what we're going to be working on, we're going to be building little worksheets. Uh, almost all of them have the same kind of layout. You have a title, and you have a subtitle. Like so. And usually those go in the first two lines. Now you'll notice, first off, what is in cell B1 here? If you look, it looks like title, right? But if you look up here in our formula bar, and if I double click it, you see there's actually nothing there. Everything I just wrote was in A1, and A2 in this case. <coughs> now, Excel's default method, uh, default thing that they actually do, is it spills over to the right if there's nothing there. Now, if I were to put something in here, it's going to cut it off. Now, I can always come up here in between these and resize back and forth, or I can just get rid of the thing that I just put in, and you see it'll show up again. Now, I'm going to fill out this little sheet here uh, in kind of a similar way than what you should see in the book. And then we'll go through the menus and how everything works and what you're likely to see in the chapter. So I'll just have a little set of titles here, North, South, East. Then we'll have a total. And we'll do something here. Let's see. Uh, we'll call this City View. And we'll call this City Burg. And I'll have another total. I'll make this relatively small. And I'll put in some numbers of varying sizes. You know, anything from, let's see. There you go. There's one. Put another. 
Okay. One more here. So, and last one, or last set here. First and foremost, I uh, just put in some numbers. In chapter one, you will typically be, uh, for the most part anyway, uh, you're going to be writing your numbers and everything in. A lot of chapter one is a lot of typing and copying. Once we get to chapter two, uh, there's a lot less of that. You see more formulas and things like that, and we'll get to that here shortly. Now, I wrote in 12.8, and you see 12.8 here. I wrote in 14.98765, and you see that up there. Now, if you look at each of these, whatever I wrote is displayed on the screen, except for here. Notice that it's 8.9999 and so on, but I got a 9 here. What ended up happening here is it rounding. And I get a lot of people uh, in class in particular who will write in the number and then all of a sudden raise their hand and they're like, it's changing my numbers on me, it's doing this, it's doing that. Now, if this is too big, generally speaking, uh, it may round up. You may also see something along the lines of, let's see if I can make it do it. Oh, of course not. I'll have to make my numbers a little bit bigger. Uh, let me just add this in here. That, there we go. Now, if you see something along the lines of this when you're doing some stuff in editing, you'll see these little hash marks, which, as a side, on a side note, uh, Google the word Octothorpe. Octothorpe. That is the actual name for that hashtag. That's your uh, fun bit of information for the day. Now, if you see this, that just means that it's too big. Your column's not big enough to hold all the information. Uh, so I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to adjust this back to the way it was. Excel is actually fairly forgiving. If you mess something up, you can always undo it. And it saves a good number of steps, actually, uh, as you can see. I'll go back there. There we go. <coughs> so we talked about it rounding. We talked about it, the little hashtags you may see. Now let's talk about the Home tab. Uh, well, File first. File you can save, just like you can in Word. Save ads, open, make new ones. And there's even an Info tab that has info over who makes what. You can print and do all the same stuff you can do in Word for the most part. Home tab is where you're going to be a good portion of the time. Unlike Word, uh, what you're going to find here is you're only going to be really in the first two or three menus here. Uh, you're not really going to worry about the last few. So I can, of course, copy and paste, just like you can in Word. In fact, you'll notice, at least up to here, all of this is exactly just like we're copy and paste, same menu. Uh, it differs a little bit more on this side, though. Uh, we can change font, sizes, bold, underline, colors, the font, shading, and various other things. <coughs> we can even deal with alignment, and I can put things at angles and stuff if I want to. Now, one of the first things we typically do when you make a worksheet, I'm going to highlight this here. Uh, you merge and center some stuff. So if I click here just one time and I drag across, I'm highlighting. Uh, this is actually one of the more difficult things people tend to find. There's about three or four ways to interact with the cell. One, you just click on it. That's it. And you see I've got it highlighted. That's all. <laughs> if I double click, I am officially inside that cell where I can change it. Same as if I clicked up here. And you notice most of my menus gray out when I do that. I click off then the menu comes back. You can also click on this line and I can just move that wherever I want. In fact, let's say I meant to have an extra row here. Then I just highlight and I can pull down. I can also click on a row and go to insert and now I've got an extra row. Now, there's a three or four ways to do just about anything you could possibly want in Excel. Now this bottom right hand corner 
This is used for formulas. This isn't a formula, so it's not good to use it here, but uh, on the off chance somebody does, if you click on the little dot and I pull it across, you see it highlights kind of, and it's going to just copy that text repeatedly. I'm going to undo it. This is only used when I have a formula. Uh, we'll get to formulas here in a bit. What I want to do here is highlight here in the middle and just make it all kind of grayed out. I'm going to hit merge and center. What that's going to do is make this entire set of cells one big cell. So that means when I'm painting, when I'm aligning and stuff like that, it just makes it all one big thing. Uh, so it doesn't matter where I click, whether I click here or over here, it's all the same cell. I can do that to any of this stuff over here, one big cell. And I can undo it as well. Now you can't do it on multiple rows. Uh, it tends to give you errors or erase things completely. Uh, so let's bring it back. So I'm going to do a little bit of formatting here. I got my numbers and stuff in. Uh, got my little drop down. Let's see what.